Hi, Steve Gale here. In this video, I'm going to record, I'm going to um, demonstrate uh, doing an EC2 instance for the Industry 4 server configured from a user data script. So we'll start off going into EC2. <coughs> and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to launch an instance. And we'll just use the um, Amazon Linux 2 AMI. So we'll select that. Just um, selected, and <clears throat> we'll just use two two micro, so it can run in the free tier. And next thing we'll do is configure the instance details. So we'll just um, use a default VPC, and um, we'll just um, put this into a public subnet. So we'll just use default settings here. <clears throat> Um, nothing special there, no IAM role needed. And um, we need to use a data, so I've got to use a data script. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the use data script here. Uh, just uh, copy there, um, control A, control C, and I'm going to um, paste it all in there. And uh, this is going to install LAMP server. So it's going to start installing PHP, MariaDB, um, enable um, Apache, change the uh, user, user Apache user information <coughs> so that the EC2 user has access to the, um, to the uh, var www folder. And um, then we're going to put a PHP info file in var www HTML PHP info. Then we're going to start MariaDB. We're going to configure MariaDB um, with a root password of password one, uh, create a user account, and uh, grant privileges on that user account. Then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to install um, uh, some additional PHP stuff so that we can um, uh, run uh, phpMyAdmin. And then we're going to go and get the uh, phpMyAdmin files. And uh, we're going to make a directory PHP under var www.html PHP my admin. And we're going to put the PHP my admin files in there. And then we're going to restart MariaDB. So that's our, that's a user data script. So next thing I'll do is I'll go to storage. And um, I'll just use uh, 8 gig GP2, be fine. Uh, we don't need any tags. Oh. Um, yeah, I could add a tag. No, I won't do that. So next one, security group. So first thing we note, we can SSH into the box. So this should be locked down further using a static IP. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a rule for H. I'm going to add a rule for um, HTTP on port 80, so I can HTTP into the server. I'm not, not going to use HTTPS for the moment, but probably would add HTTPS. And um, certainly this one should be locked down to a static IP. But for this purpose, I'll just leave it open. Um, so that that's probably the only additional rule I need at the moment, and eventually I'll need an additional rule because I want to um, I want to manage the database remotely. But um, so but we'll put three three oh six, but we'll put three three oh six in later from a static IP. So let's go to a review um, and uh, launch. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So what I need to do is I need to um, uh, create a new key pair, RSA key. I'll give it a key pair name. I'll call it um, I40 dash in today's date, 0604.22. And um, I'll download the key pair. And that's come as a PEM file. And um, then I'll just go to uh, launch instances. And I'll wait for that instance to launch. So the next thing I want to do is I want to SSH into this box. Um, so I'll just um, I'll just go to View Instances, and we'll see that instance will just start starting to fire up. So while I'm waiting for this instance to fire up, what I need to do is I need to convert this um, PEM file into a PPK so I can use it with PuTTY. So to do this, I'm going to use uh, PuTTYGen. So I'll go and find PuttyGen. 
Oh, Putty, Putty, where's Putty? Putty and Putty Jen. And I'm going to um, uh, load the key file and I'm after a, um, um, I'll go to all files and I'm looking for that's the, the PEM file. So I'll pick up this PEM file and I'll open that and uh, OK. So what I need to do is um, I've loaded the, the PEM file. So what I'll do is I'll um, I'll save the key. So I'll save the private key. Uh, yeah, that's fine. And I'll save it as a um, 06 as a PPK and save. And um, then I can close this. So I can see that my instance is running now. So if I just go and have a look at my instance details, I can see this is my public IP address. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll copy this. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and run PuTTY. And so I'll pick up PuTTY. And I'm going to go as uh, EC2 user at and um, that IP address, but EC2 user. And uh, but what I need to do is I need to load the um, the PPK file. So I'll go into uh, SSH auth and um, and then I'll browse here and I'll pick up that uh, PPK file and open that. And uh, now I should be able to open the connection to my instance. And yes. And I should be logged in as EC2 user. So um, I'll just do a um, uh, PWD. And you can see I'm at home EC2 user. So what I've done now is I've just changed directory to var www.html. And you can see I've got my PHP info file. And I've also got my PHP admin folder. And um, that's been created there now. I should probably remove this, but so what I'm now ready to do is I'm ready to log in with PHP my admin. What I can also do is I can have a look at um, my SQL and just have a look and see at um, whether the users have um, have been created.